Uh, so welcome everybody. Talking, uh, yes. So Justin, uh, send that to me. My wife very specifically wants a picture of me speaking. So thank you. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> no, I said it's just a cool thing. I mean, seeing your spouse or something. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Yeah, I've actually got a slide to remind me. So perfect. I, we can skip that one. Okay. Anyway. Uh, so we're going to be talking about serverless Discord bot Azure Functions. Um, you guys can take pictures of the slides. You don't have to. Everything we have here, I'm showing here today, is going to be in my Git repository, the Poshwolf slash sessions. Um, uh, I've updated the slide deck in the last you know, 15, 20 minutes, so I'll push an update and it'll be there. Um, yes, I am the Poshwolf. That's what I go by online. In real life, my name is uh, Anthony Howell, in case you're wondering. I don't have my lanyard on, but here it is. I'm legit here. Um, anyway, I'm from Eugene, Oregon. Uh, it's about a six hour train ride. Um, and if you ask ChatGPT what the typical Eugene person um, doesn't talk about all the, uh, all the stoners in Eugene, but this is what a typical person is. Um, I got three kids, one on the way, about a third of the way here, so three and a third kids. Um, two dogs, a wife, and a cat. Been in IT for a while. And one of the interesting things in preparing, so these are just, this is just stuff I copied from last year. Uh, I haven't done anything with any of these in the last year. <laughs> so we're gonna ignore that. Um, I am employed, they're not paying for me to be here, so I'm not gonna mention them. They are a great employer. I hope to be with them next year. Um, however, a fun fact is that I've been to four in-person summits, five counting the virtual, I've had a different job every single time. So fingers crossed it'll be the same one next year. <laughs> so I, I chalk it up to, uh, Poor luck, not incompetence. Um, so Justin, you got the picture, thank you. Cool, so we're, what we're gonna run through today um, is uh, running Discord bot, right? Uh, so I'm talking about purpose and goals, why I'm doing this. Does anyone here actually use Discord professionally? Professionally, professionally. <laughs> we got one person, cool. But everyone does, a lot of people, everyone here probably uses Discord, right? Yeah, what's that? You hired someone from Discord, cool. I know someone that works there. Uh, but. Um, this is a personal passion project, and I'll tell you why I got into this. Um, and we'll talk about the slash command process. So this specifically um, does not require running service like Poshbot does, and this is not a slide on Poshbot, and we'll talk about that in a second. Um, uh, but the slash command allows us to do this uh, the serverless approach. Um, we'll get into function chaining, um, and the, specifically the workflow that's required for this in Azure Functions, uh, creating a Discord bot um, uh, through the Discord developer portal, uh, avoiding frostbite, that's what I call cold starts. In PowerShell, it is crippling, especially in this use case. Uh, and fun fact, Microsoft develops Azure, Microsoft develops PowerShell. PowerShell is the slowest cold start of any language supported in Azure Functions. So why? Great question. Um, we'll look at the code itself and as well as adding commands to your bot. You actually have to explicitly do that. Okay, so why not Poshbot? So if you're running a bot, a chat bot, Poshbot should be your number one choice if you're doing PowerShell. Um, but for my specific use case, I didn't want to be running it somewhere. I don't want to run a computer at home all the time. I don't want to be running a service in Azure. And so not Poshbot. So nothing against Poshbot. Very specifically wanted to say that because I've developed bots in Poshbot before. It's really cool. Uh, okay, so why? Um, the short version of the story uh, is I've got a, a several friends, we all get together, we, we game uh, every week, um, and we typically will play games that require you logging into a server. Um, anyone here played like any kind of game on a public server? I've never been called worse names, right? People threaten to do worse things than my mother than on a public Rust server. It is miserable, and they sound like they're freaking 12 years old. I mean, it's um, probably, yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, so I would always host our servers, and I've done that at home, I've done that at the office, um, when I had a, a good boss who was myself, um, and, uh, but, uh, but ultimately where I'm at now, electricity is expensive, I'd rather spend that money on other things, um, and so I wanted to put something uh, in Azure, and I also didn't want to have to be available when somebody wanted to start the server. 
So because before I just turn it, turn, I had an old Opiplex in the corner at home. Just turn it off when we were done with it. But then how does it get turned on? Well, they got to call me, they got to text me, and you know, if I'm out doing something else or whatever, not not a good um, not a good experience. Uh, and so my my intention is or has been and was uh, to move these into Azure to have a bot that we can interact with um, using Discord. My friends are not techie. They can use Discord. Um, at one point, I had a hybrid runbook worker, and I tried to teach them how to use invoke rest method to a webhook in Azure Automation, and that failed. They still text me. So, so that's why I got into um, running a bot uh, in Azure. Um, and so specifically, I want to call out, I kind of mentioned this, electricity is expensive. Um, and what's cool, Azure VMs bill on consumption. So if you don't play all the time, uh, then you know you can start it, you play on it, and, and my bot that I, that I built will actually shut it down. We're not gonna get into that side of things, but I do wanna mention if you guys wanna get into running bot or game servers on Azure, um, I've done a lot of work with this. I'm happy to share what I've done. We're not gonna get into that today, but come see me afterwards, I can, we can talk about it. Um, and then Azure Functions build based on consumption. So if you don't use them a lot, you don't pay very much for them. Um, and then of course, professional development. I don't always get to do the things I want at work, so I gotta do it at my personal time, and it's cool. I get to come out here and talk to you guys about it, and you you were all here by choice. Um, so anyway, cost was a really big thing for me. I spent about three dollars a month on my uh, my uh, function app that runs uh, my Discord bot. It's really cheap. The function app itself is I spent about four cents on it, storage account, and then you don't need app app insights. Consumption, yes. Uh, that's a good question, I'm not actually sure. This is what shows up in cost management. Oh, uh, is this consumption based? The answer is yes. And is this before or after free tier? I'm not sure. This is what shows up in cost management. So, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't have a good answer for that. So, anyway, if you guys wanted to know, that, that was my goal here. Um, and then my goals overall, so I needed a bot that is Discord based, um, Azure based, because I don't want to host it somewhere, inexpensive, fast, and specifically PowerShell. I know PowerShell, so it has to be PowerShell. So that's why we're doing this. Uh, so prerequisites, obviously PowerShell. I'm gonna say that word a lot probably today. Um, a Discord developer account, it's free. Uh, Azure subscription, you're gonna spend about $3 a month. Um, and Azure function knowledge. I'll get into some little bit of the Azure function stuff, but really the stuff I'm not gonna be talking about is how to deploy function, there's a lot of docs on that. So we're just gonna save some time. Um, demo environment here, I got Windows 10. Obviously you can do this anywhere that VS Code runs. Um, specifically with the Azure and Azure functions extension. Um, and it's, it's really important when you are setting up a function app, it's PowerShell 7.2 or higher. So there's something I'm doing with a DLL that doesn't work in PowerShell 7.0 and 7.1. I don't know what it is, but it has to be at least 7.2. Um, and then I've got a Discord on a PowerShell module. And before you look at it, know that it needs a lot of work, okay? I didn't have time to polish it before this. Um, it meets all the requirements for the bot, but if you wanna take a look at it, fix something, feel free to, it's in a public repository that I've got linked right here. Cool, so uh, is, is anyone here familiar with what a slash command is in Discord? So you type the slash command, cool. So for anyone that's not, we are going to, oh, hang on a second. Uh, so I, I took videos anticipating that the um, Wi-Fi might not work, so we're just gonna watch the videos because I made the effort to do it. So this interface looks familiar to everybody, right? Discord. Um, so running a slash command down in the, this is a really short video, don't worry. Um, down in the, um, the input box, you type the name of the command, you get a list of all the commands. I've got three different bots here. Um, I got so frustrated with cold starts, I actually was looking at doing this in C sharp. Um, that's another story. Um, stuck with PowerShell. So I got a specific one uh, calling out to my Azure function here. I call slash hello. Uh, so it sends a command, and we'll talk about this, these timings here, um, but the chatbot responds, and so this is where it says, you know, the bot is thinking, PowerShell Summit 2023 is thinking, and then when we get the response, it'll actually display the response as a, um, just text there. So, this is perfect for um, a serverless setup because we have this process where we, we give it the command, the bot receives the command, and we have, the bot has three seconds to respond. And so this is why cold starts are really bad. 
So in that three seconds, we can either execute the command or we can defer the command. So in this case, we're deferring it. We send it a specific type code, which we'll look at, um, and that's where we get the bot is thinking. And then after that, we have 15 minutes. We have, it gives us a token that we can respond to within 15 minutes and do whatever we want. So in these 15 minutes, for instance, you can start a game server in Azure, as an example. Or you can do the hello thing. I mean, that's kind of lame, but that's what I use to make sure the bot is actually running. Um, and so in Azure Functions, uh, we have two functions. This is going to obviously be a lot more. Uh, but the first function is that it actually receives it. Um, and, we, and we defer it by passing it to the sec second function. And this line between defer and receive command, there's a lot of ways to do that in Azure Functions. And I've tried three different ones, and I'll tell you why I'm sticking with the one I have right now. Uh, but the second function will then execute it and then finally send the update. Make sense? Cool. Uh, and we'll get to the code here. I just want to make sure everyone understands before we get to it. So function chaining, um, this is not something I've done before in Azure Functions, so I've tried several different evolutions of this. Uh, one of the ways is queue-based. Um, so I've got a link here. Uh, when I first started, I wanted to see if anyone else had done it. Uh, this guy named Devin Rich, never met him. He has a great blog post about how he set this up using a queue in Azure Functions. Um, and so that's what I started with, is a queue. Um, however, uh, you, and you guys understand how a queue works in Azure Functions. One command sends it to the queue, the other command pulls it out of the queue, and that's how it starts, okay? Um, but this is slow, and that's relative. So for a chat bot, this is slow. So what I mean by that is when someone types in a command and they enter and then it says bot is thinking for 10, 15 seconds, I don't remember the exact timing, um, but the user experience is that, oh, is this bot even working? And so for this particular use case, it is slow. So I tried durable functions. That was the next thing. Um, and we had, there was a talk earlier on durable functions and, the, and it's just using some of the, um, I was talking to Justin about this, some of the, the same technologies, the queues and tables in the background. However, one thing I found with durable functions is for some reason, and I don't know, I couldn't find a reason for this, it pounds the storage account really hard. I spent somewhere between 30 and 40 extra dollars in a month on the durable function, yeah. Okay, okay, so the, so the, uh, what Justin was saying is that it's because it uses tables and it talks to the tables a lot. Summary, yeah. It's LRS storage, yeah. I'm cheap. <laughs> so so, the, so the, the comment was, it depends on what type of storage, suggesting that maybe it might be ZRS um, instead of LRS. But no, I'm cheap, this is personal, I don't have to worry about the data. Good point though. So finally what I settled on was doing uh, what I'm calling an HTTP post chain. Uh, so the first function receives it, and it passes off to the second function just with invoke rest method. It's really, it's, it's like dead simple. Um, however, what I found is that if that function didn't respond within three seconds, and if I've got to start up a server, wait for it to start, that's gonna, that's gonna take, blah. It's gonna take longer than three seconds, and so we have to use the timeout sec parameter on invoke rest method. I didn't know that existed until this particular use case, and we'll look at that. All right, so a, a deeper look at, uh, at the functions. So for Discord, when you receive the interaction from the Discord bot, and we'll talk about, how, we'll get to how to you know, make that connection you have to do a bunch of things to it. So it comes in, you have to first validate the signature. And if it isn't valid, you have to send a 401. I learned this the hard way. The documentation has it very nicely spelled out. Like if you don't send a 401, your bot gets uh, disabled. My bot got disabled. I couldn't figure out why until I read the documentation. So Discord's got the good documentation, guys. Um, and also you might get pinged from Discord. You have to respond with an ACK. Um, and then finally, where we get to the, the deferral part, where we have to send a defer response, which is type five. We'll look at that in the code, and then pass it off to the um, the second command. And these names: HTTP start orchestrator. That's just a holdover from uh, when I did a durable function. I used the VS Code template thing, and that's what it names them. So, compared to the previous diagram, function one, function two. Make sense? Cool. Let's actually look at some code now. Now that you all know how this works. All right. So, oh, this is the repository. So all that we're looking at here is in the repository. So like I said, if you want to look at it again, you're welcome to. All right, so, um, is that good in the back? Text size wise, good, okay. All right, so in the profile, 
and as a refresher, the profile.ps1 runs every time the function app uh, launches. So when it does a cold start, profile runs. Uh, and so this is where you can put, for example, a function. And so this function specifically is what um, use, uses the data that Discord sends us to actually uh, send a follow-up. So after you get the bot is thinking, to send that follow-up, you use the, some of this, uh, the, the application ID or an, an token that you receive to send a follow-up. Um, and this is the only function that I have written in PowerShell. Well, actually, that's not true. This is the only function that I have um, that's not in the Discord.net PowerShell module, specifically because um, the Discord.net PowerShell module that I wrote, it uses the Discord.net SDK uh, to do everything. And the SDK has two different uh, client types, a REST client and a socket client. And most of the stuff is in the socket client. And, we're, and we want this to be stateless. Uh, and so I'm leveraging the REST client stuff. And I couldn't figure out how to do this using their, uh, their, their client. Uh, so I, this is the only one I have uh, actually uh, written out like this. All right, so then our function one, or HTTP start, uh, is, looks like so. So at the top, we've got our typical um, function app stuff, uh, our parameters. Um, and li line seven and eight here, we'll talk about that when we get to talking about what I like to refer to as frostbite. Um, uh, but down below here, uh, I do need to call out that we, um, I'm referencing an environment variable here. When you create your Discord bot, and I'll show you the process, you wanna make sure and take that publicly and store it as a configuration item in your function app so you can use it. Um, because we have to use that to validate the signature. So you can, look, you can see that we've got uh, some of the different parameters that come in uh, from the headers on the interaction that Discord sends us. And I'm first here, lines 12 to 23. I'm just making sure they have values. And if not, then it, it fails. Uh, and then down here below is where I'm actually using, and I'll highlight it here, the test discord interaction. Uh, so that is a command from the discord.net PowerShell. It does the signature validation for you. And this is really nice because um, otherwise it gets really complicated. And this is, yeah, this is, this is, this command is why I use their SDK because I don't have to do all of the signature validation stuff. That's yeah, not, not, not enjoyable. Um, and if that fails, you gotta push uh, a 401, so HTTP status code unauthorized. Uh, and I know it looks funny here. So even though this is up here, um, it doesn't actually run until the execution of the, the function finishes, but in this case, it throws right afterwards, so it, it, the, the script ends there. <clears throat> All right, so the, the ACK. Uh, so when, when Discord actually sends that, that ping, you have to respond with a type equals one. So we're setting the response here to type equals one. Uh, and, and that will tell Discord that you're responding to their, uh, their ping. And if it's a command, request.body.type will equal two. And so we have to send this type equals five, content equals pending uh, within, within that uh, three seconds. And since we do wanna pass this off, yeah, question. Where do I, the question is where do I get the types? Um, it's in the documentation. So, so Discord's got some, I probably should have linked it here, um, but Discord's got uh, their documentation on how to handle with, uh, handle the slash command responses and whatnot. So yeah, good question. Uh, so here is where we're actually calling the next function. Uh, so there's an environment variable for the name of your function app, uh, and I found that just for you guys, so I didn't have to hard code something and you could use it to deploy your own. Uh, and then of course I use it in mine now too. Uh, and, and the other environment variable I want to call out um, is if you have your function set to um, uh, function level authentication, you have to use a function key, so I actually take one of them and put them into the configuration of the function app. I'm looking for a better way to do that, so if someone is familiar with a better way to do that, I'd love to hear it. Uh, but that's what I'm doing now and it works. Uh, and then as the body, I'm literally passing everything that Discord sends me, sends me, which comes on the request.body, I'm just converting that JSON and sending it to the next, the next function. It's really simple. I mean, there's, no, there's nothing complicated about how this is passing the value, right? Uh, and then invoke rest method. And I, and I really wanna point out here, the timeout sec, this will not work with long commands if you do not use a timeout sec, because otherwise, um, this will take longer than three seconds to execute, and Discord will never hear from you, and the interaction will fail. So I actually think, in that screenshot, 
or in that video I had, um, oh, there we go. There may have, may or may not have been, um, here we go, right there. This is what happens. The application did not respond. That's what happens when you don't respond within those three seconds. All right. Cool, and then finally at the bottom, uh, all the places where I set the response, I'm now making sure it gets pushed to the uh, output binding. Any questions? Cool. All right, so function two, or what I'm referring to as the orchestrator, uh, this is where we actually deal with the commands. So again, this is the same HTTP output binding, or input binding, um, so we've got a parameter, and I'm just grabbing the body, putting it in its own, um, and for logging sake, I'm getting rid of any of the, um, the coloring in the output. So that's where this PS style stuff comes in, because um, it looks funny in the, uh, in, the, in the log of the Azure function. Uh, and here, the name of the command will come in as body.data.name. And so this is where you can switch on the command. So the hello command, this is exactly what just ran. The only difference is I added a start sleep, so that it would get that delay so I could pause it in time to point out that it was thinking. Like, that's the only difference between what we saw just earlier um, and, and here. And then on my bot, I've got a start server command. It's more complicated than this, but this is, this is how you can deal with parameters. So some, and I realized that I intended to have an example for you guys, I don't have one. Do we wanna see one live really quick? Are we feeling lucky? Okay, we're feeling lucky. Uh, okay, let's, let's do this. All right, so if you have a command like start server, um, you can give it, you see how it says options here. We have the, is this big enough for you guys? Back? Okay, so you can, you can give it, uh, in this case it takes a, a parameter called server, and I'll show you guys how to actually make these, don't worry. Um, and so if I start typing a server, so we're playing Valheim right now, so that's the server I've got. Um, this is how you give it a, param, a parameter. Uh, and so in the actual code to handle the parameter, uh, this is how we do it. So in, in the body, we've got, um, uh, we want to look for a key within, uh, so it's a, uh, the, the options hash table in, in data is where all of those parameter values come to us. And in this case, the start server command has one parameter, so I'm not doing any validation to see what the name of it is or to get multiple out of there. Um, uh, but we're, so we're just referencing here on line 22, body.data.options, uh, the first one and the value of that, and then it's gonna return start server server. In fact, I'm feeling really lucky today. Um, if we run this, it should, fingers crossed, did not respond. See, that's what I was afraid of. Okay. Uh, and it was, I literally just made sure this was running earlier this morning, so that's unfortunate. Sorry, guys. What it would do is respond with the name of the server, and then in, in my actual bot that I have, it'll actually, in the background, start it, and then respond when it has started. Um, and then I got a command, I get like IP information and stuff. So I'm cheap, I don't like to use static IPs. Uh, all right, and then at the bottom, this is where we have the send Discord follow-up. So I'm just, I made the decision to just pass the body and let the function, you know, get the data out of it, but all it needs, uh, if you remember from profile to PS1, is the token and the um, application ID. And then it sends that, uh, it sends that follow-up message. So we saw it in the, the hello command. Uh, and yeah, that's it for the orchestrator, for function two, if I want to look at it. Any questions? Cool. All right, so let's get back into this. Okay, so to actually create the Discord bot in the discord.com slash developer portal, these are the steps you have to take. We'll actually walk through them. You create the app, you add a bot to your app, uh, you create the uh, OAuth URL so you can actually add it to your server, and then you add it to your server, and then add the URI for function one or HTTP start into the interactions URI. Um, and it's really important that before you do this, you actually make sure your function is warm. So when you add the interactions URI to your Discord bot, Discord won't allow you to save that until it's tested it and confirmed that it's working. So this is where you have to make sure that you're validating the signature, you're responding to pings, all that stuff, um, which it's already done for you, because I've got the code you guys can use. Uh, and improve, hopefully, right? Cool. Uh, so, uh, because I did not think the 
internet would be dependable. Got another video here. Uh, oh, and this might not be zoomed in. Oh, it's not, is, that, is that okay for you guys? We don't actually have to read anything, so it's not code. So this is, this is the developer portal. So I've already got the application created. Um, right hand, top right hand corner, new application. Shh, no, just kidding. <laughs> uh, and so you create the application, give it a name, you check a box, you hit create. Really simple. And so when you get, get the application, uh, this is, oops, uh, this is what, you know, the, the page of the app. Um, uh, and this public key that you see here, this is the public key you want to put in your uh, configuration item for your function app. And if you want to use the code without changing it, you got to call it discord underscore public underscore key. Right? And it's okay to look at it here because this is a public key. I'm, I'm not worried about it being uh, you know, recorded. Um, and that's not to mention there's the function key down there too. Oh well. Um, all right, so the bot. So when you click on the bot the first time when you have your application, you don't, this, this is, this shows up because I've already clicked on, there'll be a create a bot button here. I figure it's gonna be really easy to see because it's the only button on the screen where you don't have one. Uh, so we skip that. So, uh, so I'm just uh, showing that here. Uh, and then going back to actually create the URL data to your server, we go to OAuth2, go down to URL, URL generator, we select, and we get to enjoy how long it takes me to find these. But uh, we select, maybe I should have sped this up, I'm sorry. There's application commands on the right. Uh, and then scroll down. If you want to give your bot more permissions than your server to do more things, you want to select more than what I'm selecting here. This is just the bare minimum. Uh, and we're specifically selecting the bot, because it's a bot, application.commands, because we want to be able to add and remove commands from our bot uh, using this bo the bot uh, itself. Uh, and then uh, finally to be able to send messages uh, on, on the server, right? And you can obviously do, I mean, I've seen, I've seen bots that do all kinds of things. You could, you could do that. I haven't gotten into any, in, into any of that yet. Uh, so when you've got all those checked, you'll get this nice URL at the bottom. You copy it, paste it into your, um, your favorite internet browser. Oops. Uh, and when you launch it, you get this nice screen. You get a drop down for the, for the server you want to add it to. You can only add it to servers you have managed server permission on. This is my personal one, so cool. And on the next screen, it gives you some more information about what the bot can do. So you remember I checked send messages, so it's showing that here. And then you hit authorize and that's it. And there's still a bunch of time. Oh, okay. So in the function app itself, and this is not zoomed in. Again, I apologize. Is that, is that okay for you guys in the back? We want to try this live. All right, we're gonna keep watching the video. I'm not feeling too lucky anymore. Uh, we're gonna open up the, the function. We're gonna go to the um, HTTP start function or function one in that, the first diagram. And we're just gonna get the function URL. So that's, that's all this is doing here. And this takes forever to load. So we're gonna skip a few seconds here. Cool. So I've now clicked the get function URL. I'm just grabbing that function. I'm copying everything that's in there because I'm using function authentication. I'm going back into my bot. I'm going to the general information tab. And we have the interactions endpoint URL. This is where you put that. So it knows where to send that data. And again, your bot has to be warm or otherwise this will fail. That took me a long time to figure out, just so you know. So that's really um, expensive information that I'm giving you for free. Uh, so yeah, so actually we'll, we'll, we'll walk through this. So I'm gonna paste it in. I gotta make a change so it will actually give me the option to save. We have the option to save down below. Uh, and then it actually will send something to your bot, wait for it to respond, and only if it responds will it save it. So that took me a long time to figure out, so. All right. Any, any questions on that? I know that's not specifically PowerShell, but it's useful in this, uh, in this context. Wait, say that again? Uh, so for the, so the question is, what are the commands do I have for the bot? So for this specific bot that I'm worth looking at the code here, I just have slash hello slash start server. However, you can add as many as you want. I mean, it's just a matter of adding um, options to the switch statement. So on, on, my, on my bot, I've got start server, stop server, um, get status, update status, and a couple other things. So, and I'm happy to talk talk about that. Just a little out of out of scope for today's talk. That's all.
Okay, so the question is, setting it up in the Discord um, uh, developer portal, does each command need its own URI? Right? Okay, so the answer is no. Um, the bot is the only thing that needs the URL, and so the Discord will send that bot all of the commands for that bot. And then inside of the bot code, oops, actually escape out of here. So inside of the bot code, this is why we have the, the switch statement, remember? Cool. Yeah, and we'll talk about how to actually add the commands so that they show up in the UI, and we'll, we'll get there. I'm sorry, there's a lot of things that are all like dependent on each other, and so what the order is the best? Well, yeah, question. Yeah. So the question is, um, when you send a response to your bot and it fails to respond, as we saw earlier, is it warming up in the background? Yes. Uh, and depending on, so every time it, it launches, it does a cold start, it runs everything that's in your profile. So it takes at least, um, it, you know, I heard one of the Microsoft guys say five seconds. I've never seen a PowerShell function warm up or go cold start in five seconds. Um, it takes as long as it takes for it to start, which is probably at least 10 to 15 seconds, and then, and then run your profile. Uh, so on my bot, it, it does some other things, so it takes about a minute to do a cold start. But yes, as soon as you send it a request, the function warms up. So you, you might get lucky if you run one command, it fails to respond, you give it a minute and then run it again and it'll respond. What? You know what, I don't know, let's find out. And what I'm afraid is that there's something else going, ah, see, yeah, perfect, I knew that was gonna happen. So, <laughs> but what it's gonna do in this case is it's gonna say um, start a server and it's gonna give it a name, or give it the name that we passed, and I think I actually added a start sleeping here to make it sound like, look like it's doing something. I don't actually remember. I'm sorry, I, I wasn't expecting to demo the start server command on the, on the demo bot. <laughs> we'll come back and look at that, see if it actually does anything. Cool, good question though, yeah. The question is, how parameterizable are bot commands in, in, in Discord? The answer is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so the answer is they are very parameterizable, more than I've gotten into. So the only parameters I've done are just strings. So you pass it like a server name. But you can, do, you can get a lot fancier than that. And, and I'm gonna refer you to the Discord documentation for that. Because <laughs> I, I haven't gotten into it yet. So the question is, are they strongly typed? when they hit the bot? And the answer is, I'm guessing, but it's JSON and I believe they're just whatever types JSON supports. Strongly typed. It, yeah, strongly typed to the degree that JSON does. Sorry, I'm repeating you for the recording. Not because I like to repeat everybody. <laughs> okay. When you, so have I tried spotting the body, what do you mean? Yeah, there's no reason we couldn't do that. Yeah, and we can talk about that later, yeah, okay. Uh, so let's talk about Frostbite. So most people call these cold starts, I call it Frostbite because it's very crippling in this use case. Um, yes, they have a long cold start. And it's really unfortunate, I've already shared my opinion, I won't say it again. Um, so what I did is I implemented what I call the monitor function. Um, and in my case it does two things, it runs every five minutes to keep the function warm. And my thought was that was gonna be expensive, but we saw, you know, it's only $3 a month, and it's half that if you don't use App Insights. Um, but it also, in my case, it checks all my game servers, see who's on it, and if there's nobody on it after a specified amount of time, shuts them down to save money. But in this case, it still uh, will keep, keep the bot warm. And it's, it's really simple, like, okay, come on, there you go. Um, oh, sorry, side. So all it's doing, it is running, and then it's calling the HTTP start, so originally, and I realized I probably don't even need to do this, um, but when originally with a durable function, I wanted to make sure that all that was working, and so I'd actually call the durable function with a specific um, activity function for it to target. Uh, that's it. It just runs every five minutes. Keeps the function up warm, and it's cheap. So, because it's quick. But, yeah. Any, any, any questions on that? I, I guess I should point out, I'm getting the URI, again, the same, using the website host name, this is the built-in environment variable. Function key, that's when you gotta add yourself. All right. Um, oh shoot, this is taking a little longer than I thought, so I might have to speed up just a little bit. Um, oh, yeah, I don't know why I'm switching back and forth here. A full function. So, in the repository, 
what I did is I deployed using this exact code that you see here, this is what's deployed in my demo bot. So if you guys wanna use this, all you have to do is you know, deploy it, add those two environment variables, I got a whole list at the end. Um, but yeah, I just wanna run through a couple things that we didn't hit on the other scripts. Um, one of them is requirements.psd1. Uh, if you're not familiar, this is how you can manage modules in your function. So I've just got the discord.net PowerShell module, um, which is one that, that I developed. It's 0 to 0 0.1 because it is a very alpha version, but it does everything you needed to for the bot. <laughs> not, not cleanly. Um, and again, you got the profile, uh, HTTP start, input bindings are just HTTP. Same with the orchestrator. HTTP, I mean, any, any questions about the function app? Cool, and I really wanna say, if you guys deploy this and have problems with it, definitely reach out. This is something I spent a lot of time I'm very passionate about, so I'm happy to help. Question in the back, yeah. James is making a shout out to the ASP.NET core bindings. Cool, sorry, I'm just, you know, for the recording. Cool, all right, so, uh, the, I think the, let's, let's look at this. So the last thing that I wanna get into, and I wanna make sure we cover, is how to actually add commands. So in Discord, the slash commands uh, come in two flavors. So you have the, what's called applicate, or actually after seeing the permissions, I don't know if applications is the right word. The global commands is definitely what they're called. Um, so a global command for a bot is a command that exists in the bot, and any server that that bot is added to can use those commands. However, Propagation time is really slow. The Discord's SLA for that is one hour. So if you're, if you're uh, developing uh, commands, use what they call guild commands. And in Discord API, a guild is a server. Um, and so the guild commands are specific to a server, but they are instant. So you can run the command, add the command, and then immediately test it. So in my use case, my bot is in exactly two servers, <laughs> so I just use guild command. Um, but global commands are an option, especially when you wanna develop a bot that is shared and you're confident that your commands are in a good state. Make sense? Cool. So let's walk through adding commands. And this is where I'm gonna ask you guys to be um, uh, understanding, because these are gonna look kind of funny. But they work, and I have examples, and so that's good enough documentation, right? Okay, nobody thought that was funny. Neither, neither did my wife, so. Okay, so. These are all commands uh, from the discord.net PowerShell module. This is freely available. I encourage you guys to take a look at it and consider uh, uh, contributing. Um, we're gonna use connect discord, uh, it, specifically using the REST client, our token type of bot. And this token is the bot token out of the discord uh, developer portal. And we got a minute here, so let's look. So this is my bot. Go to the actual bot section. And we have token. If I reset this token, it'll show it to me so I can use it. However, I've already done that. So uh, I've got that uh, in plain text on my disk because I like to live dangerously. All right, so we're gonna connect. We get this nice logged in response. Is this big enough for you guys in the back? James, you're in the furthest in the back. Cool. All right, and then to actually add commands. Uh, oh, first, we're gonna get our guilds. So to get Discord guild. This gives us this nice uh, output here. We've got all this information, which I actually don't know is should be private or not. Whoops, probably should have thought about that before. But, um, cool, I'll just delete the server, create a new one. It's just it's my testing server. But in there, so you can name bot testing, this is my, my test server. But in there, we got, we got enough data, with the ID specifically of the guild, um, that we can, we can create a command. So this first command, um, is just the hello command. This is how you can you add it. So this is where it gets kind of confusing because <laughs> there's the name and a description both on new Discord guild command and new Discord slash command. The reason for that um, is that I didn't have time to go back and fix it. But when you create a Discord command, you can create more types than just slash commands. Um, I don't remember what they are. This bot depends on slash commands, so that's the only thing that I've implemented. Not to say you couldn't if you wanted to. Um, and so. Um, I'm creating a, a new command, a guild command specifically, um, but also a slash command that is a slash command. There's this weird nomenclature inside the uh, discord.net SDK where they use a command builder thing and, but this works, the code works. So if you guys wanna use it, feel free to. And then passing a parameter. 
Um, we're going to do the same thing, new Discord yield command, new Discord, uh, forgot to run it. It does actually work. So if we run this, we get this nice output down here at the bottom. It'll give us a command ID. Uh, so git ID, application ID, so it gives us some information about the command. So now it'll actually show up. And we've got a couple minutes, because it's the last thing. So what we're going to do, this is where things always work, right? We're going to create a new, new command. We'll call it by, we'll leave the description because I'm in a hurry. And we'll create a new command. We should now have a new command called by. However, I do want to point out, all this does is it shows the command in the UI. It doesn't actually add any code to your bot. So if you create a new command called by, it's going to send the command to you, to the bot, and the bot's not going to know what to do with it. So while it, it should uh, show up here in Discord, ah, and you see the other one, something broke. There we go. We, oh, I thought, it, yeah, see, I can't even spell. So by, there it is. <laughs> uh, and, this, and so to add a command with parameters, um, we pass, sorry, my touchpad is kind of screwy. There we go. We pass an array to the dash options. So uh, Discord calls parameters options. So in this case, we give it an array of new Discord slash command options. Uh, so in this case, it's a, I'm passing a server, giving it a description, and telling it the type. And so if you want to get into more complicated stuff, um, this is where um, this specifically supports more than just strings because the underlying uh, Discord.net SDK supports more than just strings. Um, I'm just not familiar with how those work yet. That's all. So, and this, again, also works. Not pretty, but it works. Any questions? Cool. So we had to implement the, the commands in the bot, implement the commands in Discord. Cool. Uh, all right, so last slide. Um, so building the bot yourself. So if you want to do it yourself, and these are kind of long, I'm sorry, but I wanted to make sure this was in here, so if you had to do it, you forgot what, I, what we were talking about today, you can review this. Um, the O3 function app folder, that has the, all the code that will work with the hello and the start server command. Obviously, you, if you guys want other commands, add them. You gotta create the bot in Discord, um, set the bot's public key as a function app config item, Discord public key. Um, and you know that this is in the public repository, so you don't need to take pictures, right? Cool. Um, make sure your bot is warm. Add the function one's URI to uh, Discord, uh, and then when you hit save, uh, you'll know whether or not it is warm. Uh, and then finally, let's see, so add the bot to the server. So you remember you create that OAuth URL, navigate to it, add it to the server. You create your guild commands, then you can run commands. So it's kind of complicated. My intention was to make this a lot easier, but ran out of time getting ready for the summit. Any questions? Because that's all I got. Yes. Oh, so the question is, can you run uh, time commands? So if I understand you correctly, uh, you're saying, can you add like a, a, a function to the function app that is a timer trigger? So the answer is yes. Um, are, you, are, you, are you thinking of something Discord specific? Oh, okay, so, so the, the comment is you can't figure out how to interact with the bot without having the token from the interaction. So, ah, yes, that is a really good question because I know the answer to it. So, so if you have the bot token, so you've, you've stored it, and, and I, I do this in my bot so I can do the same thing. Um, you connect the Discord, you can do it with the REST client, you don't have to worry about the socket client, with the bot token. You gotta get that, store it, in a place your function app can access it. And then, once you're authenticated, there is a send discord message command. It's got, it takes a guild ID, it takes a channel ID, and you can send, well, let's, let's just do it. I didn't learn the first time, guys. Oh, I don't remember what the channel is. Uh, Uh, well, I already ran, the guy already got guild loaded in, in the, uh, yeah, yeah. All right, let's get Discord channel guild, guild ID, oop, dot ID. Oh, sorry. All right. There we go. Uh, oh, we got to send a content here, right? Uh, message text. 
Fingers crossed. Ooh, obviously it worked. Ah. Or, um, oh, I sent it to the wrong channel. Nice. Whoops. Well, you're supposed to, I was testing integrating with the official Valheim server. We had a, an update broke our server, and so I wanted to get a notification every time there was an update. But yeah, you can do it using the Discord.net of PowerShell module. Yeah, but you need the bot token, and you have the permission to send messages. Cool. Any, any other questions? Yeah. Go to the Summit 2023 branch. It'll be in the main branch. Uh, uh, so there is a repo for the PowerShell Summit. That's a really good point. Um, I'll, I'll PR this. Yeah, github.com slash the poshful slash sessions. And it's in the Summit 2023 branch. Yeah, okay, cool. It'll be in the main branch on Friday. I just, I got a bunch of edits I made, so I haven't pushed yet. Great. Anything else? It's in, it's, so it's in, good question. Uh, the Discord.net PowerShell module is in the PowerShell gallery, so that's where you can use it in the requirements.psd1, um, but the actual code for it is github.com slash the posh wolf slash disk wolf slash discord.net.powershell. And I've got that in the slides, if you wanna go through the slide too. And you notice that there's no, there's no readme? Oh, for sure, yeah. I mean, I didn't have time to write the documentation. Shorten and punch up the name. I'm considering that. I'm calling it specifically discord.net.powershell because it uses the discord.net SDK, which is a community SDK, but I have not I researched that a little, or so the question is, have I done something with the Azure Bot Framework? The answer is no. I researched a little bit and decided it was too complicated and, okay. Well, I guess my question is, could this be done in the Bot Framework cheaply? Yes. Cool. Yeah, we'll talk about it. Okay. Okay. All right, cool. We're on time. Anyone's got questions? Sorry, we're actually over. Okay, great. Thanks everyone for coming. <laughs>